Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments as far as what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at Back to the Future, the 1.21 gigawatt scene and how they obtain the gigawatts. <laughs> They do it in three different ways, and we're going to go over all three of them. First off, gigawatt, it's actually gigawatt, is a real unit of measure for power, and it is a big one. The large nuclear power plant that I worked at produced about 3.8 gigawatts thermal or 1.4 gigawatts electric. So 1.21 is a lot for a DeLorean. Let's see it next. That's always such a cool scene. As you can see, the time travel portion only took about a second. Again, there are three ways to go about generating this type of power. The first one is using plutonium. I can understand the need for protective clothing as this test was secret. You don't want to contaminate the area with uh, radioactive material, especially since the movie established earlier that it was stolen and they just don't want to get caught. But the respirator portion of their suit is completely unnecessary. There is no airborne hazard with plutonium. Plutonium is an alpha particle uh, emitter, so it would not even penetrate the skin. Again, the suit would be helpful in covering up the experiment, but not so much for, radi for radiation protection. Also, plutonium looks nothing like that. Here's what it really looks like. Just another boring looking innocuous metal. <laughs> now, would it produce enough energy though? A requirement of 1.21 gigawatts for one second converts easily to 1.21 gigajoules. Plutonium is ultra dense. I'm going to assume it's plutonium 239 since it's the most common. Far more energy dense than even uranium. One kilogram produces almost 30,000 gigajoules. So Doc Brown shouldn't run out of fuel anytime soon. <laughs> So that kind of would neglect the point of the first movie was they ran out of fuel and they couldn't get any, which is why they had to use an alternate source to get back to the future. Maybe their process was far more inefficient than a standard 33% for a uh, reactor or a um, internal combustion engine. Now, the DeLorean would have the tall order of needing basically a reactor, um, s control systems, and everything miniaturized that small. Uh, plus just the ability, the shielding that it wouldn't just fall apart under 1.21 gigawatts, even for a very short period of time. That takes a, That's a lot of energy to harness. Nuclear propulsion has been used for several decades now but only 0.2 gigawatts for a nuclear submarine or 0.5 gigawatts for an aircraft carrier. And those things are far bigger than a DeLorean. The next power source we're gonna look at is lightning. Now bolts of lightning vary widely in terms of energy, anywhere from 0.1 to 100 gigajoules. The average is about 10 or so. So they really have to pick and choose what bolt they use <laughs> and retrofit the DeLorean so that it can withstand the hundreds of millions, if not billions of volts from those lightning things. And you'll see they even had a little cord extending to it. You don't want to overload that either. That is an incredibly high 
voltage requirement to assume that it can even get to the uh, <laughs> to get to whatever the power source is that that harnesses lightning. Again, energy requirement still plausible, but you got to be very lucky and you have to heavily reinforce the DeLorean to withstand that kind of energy. Um, you could easily overload it, or they can get a teeny tiny one that just isn't enough for their trip. It's also single use, but again, that was kind of the whole point of the movie, so that, that checks out. There's one last method they use um, called Mr. Fusion. Wait a minute, what are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. Go ahead, quick, get in the car. No, 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 look, Doc, I just got here, okay? Jennifer's here, we're gonna take the new truck for a spin. Well, bring her along. This concerns her, too. Although it is called Mr. Fusion, this clearly has nothing to do with nuclear fusion. He's just throwing garbage into a thing. Um, so I'm guessing this is a type of uh, biomass power source. And biomass is not very energy dense at all. Um, it varies quite a bit. The average figure I found for one kilogram of biomass in gigajoules, we're talking 0 0.016. So he'd need well over 200 kilograms of biomass, and that's assuming a similar efficiency of a normal internal combustion engine. I uh, guess that's one form of recycling they do with this hyper-advanced 2015 <laughs> technology. Biomass is a real fuel source. You just need a lot more of it. And he would have had to have lo loaded up that device with a lot more biomass than what you see on the screen. It is cool to know that all of these methods are technically plausible. Again, the hard part is being able to miniaturize that type of power into something so, so small. Um, as I mentioned earlier, things that usually have that much high, high, that high power level are entire power stations and even large uh, vessels uh, still don't produce anywhere near to uh, 1.21 gigawatts. But please let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.